excellent, informative, educational, inspirational content designed to encourage, uplift, and inspire. The reason why we're here today, I'll share with you um, the general orders number three. The people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. And the connection herefore existing between them becomes that between employer and hired labor. The freedmen are advised to remain quietly at their present homes and work for wages. They are informed that they will not be allowed to collect at military posts and that they will not be supported in idleness either there or elsewhere. General orders number three, headquarters district of Texas Galveston, June 19th, 1865. So as we can see, it was a, a few years after Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation that the final remaining enslaved African-American peoples were freed. And so very similarly today, if we don't have access to, to information and we don't put that information into, uh, and we don't do anything with it, then oftentimes there are many ways that we can be oppressed and we can be disadvantaged. And so today we have a very exciting topic and we have an incredible panel of guests. Uh, we will be discussing uh, black women in politics, shaping our communities. And so we have a phenomenal moderator, um, my National Association of Black Women in Construction sister, uh, Ms. Valerie Mundy. She is our national le legislative chair um, she chairs our Congressional Black Caucus activities, and she is just overall a phenomenal educator, uh, businesswoman, and organizer. And so without further ado, I am going to present her to you, but I'd also like to make sure that our guests are aware of our upcoming events for today. So at 2 p.m., we will have mental health with Dr. Michael Lambert and Dr. Esther Lambert at 4 p.m. we'll have cryptocurrency for beginners with uh, Mr. Kwaku Ose of Cooperative Capital. And at uh, 6 p.m. we will have the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion in healthcare. So please continue to stay tuned in. Visit www.june9team.com uh, to see our full schedule of events. If you visit our Facebook page, june19.com, you can catch the replay of this as well as the other programs that we've had today. So thank you so much for joining us. Special thanks to all of our panel guests. Um, they are all uh, sisters to me and I appreciate them. And before I hand it over to Valerie, I do wanna just share um, this, this really brief, um, uh, not story, but just something that happened in the past. So I am just so incredibly uh, proud of Council Councilwoman Tosh Tasha Green. Um, I know that the ladies will be talking about their journey to uh, be elected into office, um, but I saw how hard she worked. I saw her walking around the city of Westland, knocking on doors day and night, um, speaking to everyone, serving in, in elderly communities, uh, serving meals, um, advocating for those who may not have a voice, making sure that the citizens in her community would be represented. And so when I think of service and I think of representation, and people that are truly leading by example, I think of Councilwoman Tasha Green, and I am so excited and elated to support you and your run for mayor of Westland. And this is not a political uh, conversation. This isn't about Democrats, this isn't about Republicans, but this is about people. And this is about making sure that people are informed and empowered so that they can make more informed decisions. And I'm very confident in your leadership and in your spirit of service, and I'm really looking forward to seeing your success. So without further ado, I present to you our uh, moderator for this panel today, Ms. Valerie Mundy. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Make sure I'm not on mute. Okay, yes, good morning. Um, first off, I wanna thank Tylene for um, thinking of me. I'm very honored to be here today um, amongst all of you, uh, dignitaries really and it's when they say honorable it's 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 definitely something that i lift you all up to be and so i'd like to have this discussion um because i have um a, a, an affection for all that you do 
Um, I am with the National Association of Black Women in Construction. I am the legislative chair and NAPWIC is the voice of Black women in construction. And so what we do through our legislative efforts is we work with folks like you, local elected officials, we work with state elected officials, and then we work with the national elected officials to further our agenda and also to assist you in what you're doing because we come with a separate, uh, a different viewpoint. I know that many of you are here through your advocacy in criminal justice, uh, in, in social uh, areas, and, and we'd like to be able to be your resource for um, the, the construction and economic development piece as well. I, on my background, I'm a civil engineer by trade. I spent a lot of time in municipal government, um, either working on the government side or as a consultant. And I also spent a good portion of my career uh, building airports. So um, I have an aspect that I'd like to uh, talk to you about and challenge you and also um, understand where you all are coming from. And I'd like to start by allowing you all a few minutes to introduce yourselves. Um, I'd like to start with Mayor Owens. Thank you. Good morning and uh, good morning to all the panelists and everyone that tuned in today. Um, just a little bit about myself. Um, I started as a Wayne County Sheriff for 11 years. Um, then I went on to becoming the first African-American councilwoman in the city of East Point in 2017. And God didn't stop me there and led me to becoming the first African-American mayor of East Point and also of Macomb County in 2019. So God has allowed me to excel and excel and excel with the help of uh, past leaders and the leaders that are presently on this panel. So uh, thank you for your leadership because your leadership has allowed uh, an opening of doors for not only me, but for my children. So that's a little bit about me. So, um, but moving forward, I have a, a children's book coming up that teaches young people, especially uh, minority um, children. I didn't write it for minority children, but I wrote it because being an uh, African-American young, young girl when I was a, a child and having young children that are African-American um, and being around that community, we didn't grow up learning what a council person was, a mayor, a senator, and a congress uh, man or woman was. And so I wanted to do something about that and wrote a children's book on local government and it's called What Mom Wants a Mayor because um, sometimes our children come to us and ask us questions we do not know. And so my daughters asked me uh, what that was. And at the time before I ran and got into council, they asked me that question and I did not know. And as a, a mother and an educator, I want to find that information out uh, to be a better leader, not only in my home, but outside my home. And so I always want children to learn. So I have that book and then I have another book coming out as well, just teaching kids about of course, local government and my journey into getting to the gavel. And so um, anything that I do, I want to always make sure I pass the baton and uh, make sure that we have better leaders, better than myself, uh, leading the way. So thank you again for allowing me to be here. That is phenomenal. Um, can you tell us how we can find your book? Right now, it's still we. I have. I'm working with several publisher. I'm publishers. I'm working with one in New York, and I'm um, self-published the one uh, that's called Mom with the Mayor. Now, the one that I'm working on, uh, I sent a uh, a book to the publisher in New York, and he was like, "Oh, I love your book, but I want to know about Monique Owens." And I was like, "What do you mean?" And he said, "Well." We, we know what a mayor is, and that's a phenomenal, but we want to know how did Monique Owens get to her journey on being the mayor. And so, um, and I, th I thought that was amazing because, I, you know, to, to take that book and say, no, we want to know more and how you got there. And sometimes people need to know our journey and how we got there, not just the title, but how did we get to the title? And some people need to know that. And so I was just blessed that they saw the struggles and the challenges. And a lot of people on this panel know that it was a challenge and it's still challenges and opposition uh, that we face in getting to where we're trying to be. And some people need to know that. A lot of people need to know that. They don't need to see, because they just see the glitz and glamour and see us do speaking engagements, but they don't know that we actually deal with certain things personally and have challenges that we face in order to uh, serve the community. And a lot of people don't know that. And so that is what that, that's a children's book as well. And so um, those books will be 
hopefully out by the end of this year. And I definitely let you all know, I, you know, I'm working. I want to make sure it becomes a masterpiece and a learning experience for everybody. So please um, keep us posted on it. We'd like to have you on our show so we can um, find out more. That's phenomenal. I, Thank you. That's that's awesome. Um, do we have Mayor Kendall on the line, Valerie Kendall? Okay, maybe she'll be joining us. Um, okay, um, Councilwoman Green, Tasha Green, introduce yourself, please. Good morning. I am very, very honored to be here today. My name is Tasha Green. I was elected in 2017 as the first African American city councilwoman in the city of Westland, Michigan. A little bit about me, I am the mother of one. I too am a Wayne County Reserve Sheriff Deputy and tomorrow I will be graduating from the 2021 class of the FBI Detroit Citizens Academy. So I, it's a pretty exciting time for me in addition to uh, running for mayor in my city of Westland. And so um, time and sleep are, are one of those things that I, I could actually use a little bit more of, but unfortunately not enough going on right now. Um, my background is uh, more than 20 years of uh, professional business development and construction uh, experience, specifically in property management. I'm also an internationally accredited, accredited excuse me, property manager. And um, I'm a small business owner of Green Titan Management. We manage um, uh, a variety of housing and do light construction projects. And I'm also a former member of NAVWIC. Yeah. Uh, and I, I will uh, be rejoining in the very near future. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm very happy to be here today. Excuse thank me, so correction, much. you are a member of mm -hmm. NABWIC. Thank you for re-engaging. Thank you, Tylene. She, she keeps me, she, Tylene keeps me in order. <laughs> so I'm a current member of NABWIC and, and proud. So thank you to Ms. Ann McNeil for this vision and uh, the creation of the National Association of Black Women in Construction. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that introduction. I'd like to move on to uh, Councilwoman uh, Sabrina Miller. Will you introduce yourself? Hi, so my name is Sabrina Miller and I'm from Michigan, from Detroit actually. Um, um, but currently I live in Bellevue, Pennsylvania, which is right outside of the city of Pittsburgh. Um, I received the Democratic nomination for the council position in Bellevue in May. Um, so I am the first black person or black woman, excuse me, um, to receive that nomination. Um, and in January, I'll be the first black woman to swear in in Bellevue. Um, so that's exciting. Um, a little bit about me. I have a two-year-old son who's walking into the room now to see what I'm talking about. And I also have a one-year-old um, girl. Their names are Robin and River. Um, and my husband, John, and I run a construction business called MDI General Contracting. Um, my background is community development and a career of volunteerism. Um, so I work mainly in community development, like I said, and specifically around properties and blighted property remediation, specifically the conservatorship law in Michigan, I think it's called receivership. Um, but that is what I do. I've dedicated the last four years of my time in Pennsylvania to developing the communities here in Bellevue, um, in Pittsburgh, and across the state through um, writing informational pieces about blighted property. And so I've recently taken a position that will work in Uptown, Uptown Pittsburgh, working in community development around small business development, um, property management, working as the liaison between developers that come into communities and being the spokesperson and the voice for what the community actually needs. And so I'm excited to do that now. And I'm excited to have this position as an elected, as an elected official. And I'm looking forward to November where it becomes final. You have a guest. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Doing awesome as a future leader uh, at the table. Awesome. But let me ask you: Are you, um, uh, Councilwoman? Are you uh, in Beaver County, or are you? Um, I'm in Allegheny County, but Beaver County is not too far away. Okay, I just know my my people are from Aliquippa. 
Okay. Yep. <laughs> it's a small community, but uh, a lot of a lot of well-known folks can come from there. Yes. A lot of football players, in fact. Um, okay. Well, awesome. I thank you all for introducing yourselves, and I I, I see that your backgrounds are very diverse. I wanted to put a question out there, uh, Tylee, forgive me, I wanna deviate a little bit. Um, three things that I know about that you all uh, need to do in your leadership is number one, um, social justice, criminal justice areas, uh, number two, economic development, and number three, land use. Um, can I get um, uh, your thoughts on what you think is the most important aspect of your job and what it's going to take for you to, uh, did you come to the job with those skills? And what is it gonna take for you to grow your leadership in your position? Uh, can, Mayor, can you start with us, please? Yes, thank you. That was an uh, excellent question. Um, a lot of those things, I didn't have background experience, but um, I had a lot of knowledge of some of the things that uh, came about as far as, you know, I came from a criminal justice background, you know, like I said, working as a, a police officer, a deputy and sworn in for 11 years, I knew uh, a lot about what was going on in that field as far as uh, poverty, low education, and not having the resources to be successful. And so bringing those uh that background experience and to the seat that I am that I, I currently hold now and seeing those dynamics in the community helped me to learn what what is needed and how to go for it and how to reach out for help you know and uh, give those things to my community and so um, when you talk about land use and community development and things like that you always want to make sure that people have the quality of life in order to uh, be to be successful and so how do you use what are, that you already have? And how do you, uh, you know, gain those resources from people that you don't know anything about by doing partnerships and collaboration and things like that. And so sitting in this seat that I, I sit now, I learned a lot that I didn't know, but you use what you know and, um, and you expand on that. And so uh, with the, the land use and the community development, you know, uh, and, and Pretty much what we're dealing with now is a lot of people don't have homes, um, lack of home ownership and things like that. And being uh, growing up in a single family home all my life and living in Detroit in, uh, in a low poverty area, you know, again, that experience uh, I brought to, you know, my current seat as well. And making sure that people have homes, uh, homes that they can be proud of and use and reuse the land for more development for homes. And so trying to find a way to uh, create, like I said, a, quality, a better quality of life for people than that what I had as a child and bringing what I didn't have and bringing that to the community is very, you know, can be very challenging. But again, collaboration and partnerships without, you know, outside of your community, outside of Michigan. Uh, I, I created uh, partnerships with places in Atlanta, New York, outside of the United States and things like that and bringing that to a community. And so not having that experience and, and uh, learning as I go and having people help me to uh, bring those things to my city has been absolutely phenomenal. And I think when you're a leader of a community, it's your job, whether you have the experience or not, because mm -hmm. sometimes people in leadership um, get into positions and have a certain agenda and not understanding what the people need because they didn't they they didn't live that lifestyle. You know, sometimes you don't know about poverty uh, like you should or understand it or have empathy or compassion. I'm not saying you can't, but you don't have it as much if you haven't lived that life. And so, since I've li uh, lived a certain lifestyle and I've seen some of the things that people need. I was able to bring that to the table and say, this is what the things that I'm gonna to bring to my community. This is where we start because I have the experience. I know how it feels to, um, you know, being in a single family home and not have food on my in the refrigerator or not knowing um, if my mother doesn't pay the rent, where are we gonna live? I have those experiences. And so my job is not to let anybody else have that if I can. And so, um, like I said, my own personal experiences, the, my work experience and my background, uh, has helped me to be able to bring things that to my community that people, so people don't go through the same things I've went through. And so, um, so this experience that I've been in for the last two years, no, 
almost four years, council and mayor for the last four years. But you know, once you get a different title and a different um, step in leadership, your um, responsibilities change a little bit. And so people want more from you. And so coming from, like I said, a childhood of not being around elected officials or not knowing what that is and how that works was very challenging for me. And sometimes it still can be, but just because I didn't know this job, like some people know the experiences has helped me because I'm here to serve. And that's, that's pretty much the job is you're here to serve. You're here to, uh, uh, provide resources. You're here to uh, provide a better quality of life and, and also use legislation in order to do that. And so since I know what I didn't have at times was a better quality of life, it's my job to bring that. And how do I do that? And so, um, like I said, this experience being in the seat has helped me tremendously. And, um, you know, like I said, I have leaders that have helped me in this role you know, and definitely God has allowed me to see things and gave me wisdom to do a lot of things that I didn't know. And he blesses people with um, with the abilities and the knowledge that, you know, they didn't grow up or they didn't receive in a college or anything like that. And sometimes be better than those that have. So, um, right. So, right. yeah, yeah. What is, what is the population of East Point? Um, 32,000 people. Oh, a little bit over that. And what is the major... Um, employer in East Point? I'd say the major employer at East Point, of course, we were probably number one, we've been hiring. And even though we've been uh, during the coronavirus, we were even hiring during uh, the, uh, the pandemic as well. And then we have a grocery store that does a lot of hiring. We have a lot of entrepreneurs here in the city of East Point, which I'm really proud, especially minority women-owned businesses. So a lot of people are coming to East Point and I really push for people to, especially in this economy, to be entrepreneurs. And so I'm glad that East Point is becoming one of the top uh, cities in Macomb County that are bringing entrepreneurs uh, to Macomb County. So we're teaching and we're showing people that you can create your own business business and you can create, create jobs as well and build your own wealth. So I'm happy about that. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I wanted to move to Councilwoman uh, Miller. Can you let us know? I know you have a background of property. What do you find is the major aspect of your job or, or in terms of order land use? Are we talking about social justice or economic development? What do you see as your priority? One of my major priorities, uh, so Bellevue has a population that's a little bit in decline. So I looked um, yesterday, because I usually quote that we have 8,300 residents, roughly 8,300 residents. It's actually gone down to 7,965 residents. So um, one of my major priorities is to work with our county council. Um, I don't, I believe in collaboration, as Mayor Owens was saying. Uh, I don't think that we can build a sustainable community here, especially one this small, um, even though it's situated so close to the city. Uh, we're sustainable in the sense that we have fresh produce, we have shops, we have retail, we have access to auto parts places, and um, we have community gardens that are going up. But I think that in order to grow and to sustain what we have going here, we have to build the relationships with our county council. Um, and neighboring organizations and neighboring communities that mirror us in size and have some of the resources or programming that we that we could use here. So collaboration is the biggest thing for me. And so I have already started to work prior to actually being in office uh, because I didn't see a need to wait around. Um, there's a lot of people who sit in these seats who talk about you know dreams and aspirations and wanting to do the work, but I just personally believe in doing it and I did it without um, the position, I really believe though, that having this platform enables me with resources and the ability to get into rooms that I wouldn't have had access to before simply because I didn't have a title. And that says a lot um, in itself, but that is why you know I've taken a, an approach to um, building my own chair and dragging it to the tables um, that people may not have wanted me to sit at or didn't think that I had value. So. Uh, value in the sense of that I didn't have anything to bring. Um, but here we are. So <laughs> um, yeah. collaboration is, is one of the biggest things. But in terms of land use, I think that so Pits Pits Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania has such a different landscape than Detroit or Michigan does. And so I've had to 
reconstruct the way that I think about blight because the blight issue in Detroit is just is it's very much so different here so even though it's important it's as important to the residents and the property owners and the business owners um i think as it is to people in a, in a situation where you have far more land um but the blight situation is just different so in terms of land use i have been really interested in the use of green space and in developing blighted property toolkits that fit the community so while you look to other communities to see what they're doing really understanding who your community is in terms of you know income and race and affordable housing and all, all these types of and age of the people and whether or not the income can lead to home ownership and the, and the school district and what taxes look like um productive reuse is going to be the most important thing productive and relevant um reuse is going to be important so there's two things i think that every community needs a blighted property toolkit that helps them to prevent to first acknowledge, then address and do something about, about blight beforehand um, in the process of it when, when properties have already gone into a state of decline and then after. So when they're heading towards condemnation or demolition and then determining is, is, is your community a community that, that advocates for demolition or do you wanna preserve those properties? And if you wanna preserve the properties, what does that look like? So a blighted property toolkit I think is, is extremely important but also to reiterate one that that is that fits the characteristic of the community and then also um i i think that every community needs a strategic plan and that doesn't have to be 10 years or 20 year plan sometimes you can start small and say two years let's try this out or for the length of the time that we have these elected officials who have legislative power let's just run a strategic plan through them you know through maybe there's two years left you know for some of the council we'll run a strategic plan for a short amount of time and, and develop an idea of where you want the community to go. And I think land use has to be a part of that. Um, a lot of communities around us are creating eco districts and eco innovation districts. And I think that those are really powerful. Um, so I guess it's a holistic approach, understanding where you are, acknowledging that and, and just being okay with that, not trying to be the next up and coming place all the time, but being a better version of, of what your community is and, and just advocating for who your community is. Let me remind the audience, you are on the city council for Bellevue, Pennsylvania, uh, right outside of Pittsburgh. Um, uh, has uh, Bellevue, how has Bellevue been impacted by, um, of course, the steel mill, uh, and I don't know if you have a resurgence of um, uh, development uh, or employment associated with that. Is there a new employer to replace the, um, the losses from the steel mill? Has anything, who is your largest employer in Bellevue? Um, there, I don't believe that there's a large, large employer in Bellevue, our town, like it used to be the hospital, um, but the hospital has actually gone under a really cool, um, it's, it's become an innovative incubator space, actually. Um, it does still have some medical components to it, and, but it's more so focused around innovation now with Alpha, Alpha Lab Health. Um, but I think that the county might be the biggest employer. I think most people work for the county. Um, there is no employer in Bellevue that, it, that most, people, most people work at. And then also, uh, just to reiterate, um, I'm Councilwoman-elect, so I haven't I haven't been sworn in yet. That is January. That will be January 2nd. And we also have the general election November 2nd. No, it's never too soon to, to start um, getting running. And we hope we're just able to get those juices started. I um, want to thank you so much for that intro. Uh, we'll come back to some of those questions I have. Um, uh, Councilwoman Tasha Green, tell us some more uh, about your town and um, the impact of uh, land use, um, economic development and um, uh, social and criminal justice in, in the town? Well, I think uh, a lot of the, 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 sk the skills required to uh, serve the community well, um, I actually come to the table with. Uh, a lot of it is, is based on life experiences, Mayor Owen said, uh, as it relates to uh, criminal uh, justice reform, uh, being a member of law enforcement, I can see the, um, need for reform from both angles, uh, from the, the uh, angle of the uh, law enforcement officials and also from the community who uh, has experienced, uh, you know, different in levels and instances of police brutality or 
um, being targeted based on race and and just um, over policing that has happened in this nation for quite some time. And so one of the things uh, that I am pushing for when I am elected uh, in the city of Westland, which will be a major first step in terms of um, local criminal justice reform is that our city prosecutor is appointed by the current mayor and he's been the city prosecutor for quite some time. And he actually holds a dual role as city prosecutor and also city attorney. And so our city pays his firm nearly a million dollars a year to hold that dual role. And in my opinion, when there are um, such lucrative appointments of that magnitude, a lot of times uh, contractors and, and different people walk in and they're loyal to the person who's signing their check as opposed to being loyal to the community uh, and the citizens, which is where, in my opinion, the loyalty should be. And so when I become mayor, I am going to uh, create an opportunity for Westland residents to elect their own local prosecutor. Um, I believe that they should be electing a prosecutor and mayor should not be appointing a prosecutor. Um, here in the city of Westland, we've had our, our issues with um, high profile police uh, cases and, and many of those that we've had to settle into the multi-million dollar range and um, I think uh, just, just on a global uh, scale, I think the creation of policy, first having the right people in, at the seat, at the table and in that seat um, is imperative for criminal justice reform uh, to take place. But once you do have the opportunity to serve and you are familiar with the, the voices and the, the outcry of the community, um, the creation of policy is imperative. Uh, one of the things that I created here in Westland being the first African-American woman elected is um, I created Westland's very first diversity commission in our city. And Westland uh, has been a city for nearly 60 years. Um, there has never been a push for diversity right now in the city. I am pretty much the only person uh, of African-American descent that has any type of authority in our city. Uh, my mayor has a 19 member cabinet and one not not, uh, not one African American um, on a uh, local level diversity within our city racial diversity is less than 5% across the board and that city employees, uh, police and fire and so in Westland we have a long way to go and so I look forward to partnering with residents first to uh, learn what it what type of um, government uh, they want and so that we run the city collectively um i believe it's, it's very important to hear from the people as opposed to jumping in as the in trying to be the representative that um we might think that they want or need uh but but being the type of um official that they've actually elected us to be um in terms of um land use uh westland we have a one of the one of another one of my major focuses when elected will be to um, backfill a lot of this vacant commercial space. Um, our community was hit hard with uh, and, and, and entrepreneurs with even prior to COVID. Um, once the market started to decline, the real estate market fell in 2008, between 2008, 2012. Some of those businesses never came back. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of prime spots that. Um, we're in a good position to create incentive programs to entice owners to bring their businesses to the city of Westland and also training programs that will um, train local residents uh, for free on how to become an entrepreneur, uh, partnering with organizations like the Small Business Administration and uh, offering free resources and free training, uh, teaching them how to get licensed, uh, business insurance, business education classes, um, I'm, I'm all about bringing free uh, resources to my residents, especially those that, that, that are available, um, working uh, with you know, elected officials on every level, uh, state, federal. I'm very grateful to have really good uh, relationships with um, people in, in, on every level of uh, uh, state government and even federal for that, that, uh, for that matter. Um, in terms of economic de development, we have prime locations in the city of Westland that are declining right now. Um, major uh, tax paying um, 
locations. And so one of the things that I've already started doing uh, even prior to election is reaching out to major organizations who are headquartered outside of the state of Michigan. Many of them are being taxed out of their bracket um, in other states. And several of them are currently pondering the possibility of relocating their headquarters um, and bringing them to other states um, for the and, and creating jobs and 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 um, uh, you know economic boost locally for the right type of opportunity. So those are some some of the things that I'm exploring to um, grow our city. But I think in order to 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 be an effective uh, public servant servant, you have to one identify with the people and then listen to them, find out what they want, and and manage effectively. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. Let me ask you, what is the population of Westland? Westland's population is 85,000 residents. We, um, at the last census count, we were the 10th largest city in the state of Michigan. Currently, I think we just lost a little bit of population with this last census, uh, but we were previously the 10th largest uh, city in the state at, at uh, 85,000 residents. Okay, thank you so much. Um, just wanted to... Uh, I'm not sure if you all have resources that you can go to in terms of, um, um, you know, council of, um, of black mayors or, or do you have resources that you can go to? And unfortunately, this has gone so fast. This this dialogue, this, this is just the tip of the iceberg, really, because we need to have these conversations. Um, I, we only have about seven more minutes. Can you give me a closing on what what do you think because our audience is going to be consisting of those who are outside of the uh, political uh, realm that may want to um, indulge and, and make a contribution in their communities um can i start with you mayor owens what do you uh, what do you think in terms of um, those who are interested in running what do they need to be thinking about and what type of support um, that you need that we can help you. And I say we, I represent NAPWIC. What can we do to help you? Uh, and if you could just give us about two minutes of that. Okay, thank you. Cause you gave me three questions. So I'm gonna try to put it all together in one package for you. Uh, no, no problem. I always get these uh, questions and then I forget one. And so, um, so yeah, so definitely uh, if those who are thinking about being elected first ask your que the question, why, are, why do you wanna run? Um, because sometimes we run for various reasons. When another person is running, uh, you can actually work aside them and help them get elected. And sometimes, um, just for instance, when I got elected and, I, and I've you know, helped a lot of African-Americans run races and things like that, because uh, I have a political consulting firm as well to help, predominantly my mission is to help minorities because a lot of times when we get uh, um, run these campaigns, we don't know what to do because I didn't know what to do. Uh, you don't know how to fill out a financial report. You don't know how to run a campaign. You don't know how to do these things that nobody tells you and you know, and you can't con get connected to anybody that tells you how to do it. And sometimes they pay somebody to do it so they don't know how to do it themselves. So uh, I started this political consulting firm to help uh, those who want to be elected and ask those questions to them, why are you running? And then also, Again, a lot of people always want to be the first. Let me tell you, being the first is, has a lot of challenges. It comes with something. Um, anything, anything you do first, you're, you're walking into something you don't know what you're walking into and um, what it consists of. And so um, sometimes it's not always about being the first. It's about being the right person. And so when I say that, when I see another person running against the right person, then my question is, why are you running? Can you be assistant to getting them elected or you can be a barrier to getting both of you not elected at all and the wrong person getting elected? And so, you know, you have to have those conversations and why, who, what, when, why, and, uh, and how are you going to do it? And so I always ask the elected official, how are you going to do it? Why do you want to do it? And let's start there and having that conversation. And, um, and how, you know, and, and how do you address the issues of the people? I remember a young lady that was running currently, I won't say where she's running. She said, well, I have to ask the people what they want. I said, don't you live in that city too? Aren't you a resident? So you know what you want from your city. So you, let's start there. And then you, um, you add, you know, and uh, add and subtract to, you know, the things and uh, things that you can bring and don't promise people things that you know you can't do. 
Uh, that that's very that's a no no. Don't don't. But give them an idea of what you can bring and how you already being proactive, like the councilwoman, the young lady in Pittsburgh was saying, being proactive and bringing those things even for, before you be elected. You know why why am I going to elect you when you're not even working on bringing those things, whether you have the title or not? Now, you know, and so people respect when you're doing the work when you don't have the title. And so um, so I always want to sit down and um, have conversation with African Americans that are, you know, are young or, you know, or, or older and let them know why are they doing this, how to do it. Um, and um, let them know the cost, you know, and I'm just talking about financial costs. It's the cost when you're running, uh, being elected. It's the cost away from your family. It's the cost when people talk about you on social media. It's the cost when you're dealing with stuff spiritually. So it's the cost of anything you do and when you're taking a leadership role. So it's a cost to anything you do. And so, but it's valuable. It's value in it too. But everybody don't, don't see that, you know. And so it's a conversation that I have with young people, especially minorities, and, and how to run an election, why to run an election, and if you need to sit down and step back and help somebody who who can do a better job and you can assist and Thank so um yeah. and then uh the second question is is um what was it again bring it back to well, me no no that was it i i only got okay. enough time for everyone but listen okay. thank you. this is only part one of this conversation okay it's a lot to drill down and um yeah. what is the name of your book again please um, one there? is called uh mom what's the mayor and okay. the other one is called is monique owens and getting to the gavel Okay, good. We look forward to seeing that. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, Councilwoman Miller, can you expand on what, uh, in one minute, and give us a closing uh, to what Mayor Owens is saying? You are mute. Okay. And so the question was about what, what advice would we give somebody who would be, who wanted to run? Just what advice, what type of support? You're in Bellevue, Pennsylvania. What type of um, support do you need? And and um, and really, that, that's pretty much it. Only have a minute and what you're looking to accomplish coming forward. Okay, looking to accomplish um, here is to um, work on under getting a blighted property inventory here, increasing transparency and accountability, making sure that the decisions that we make are data-driven and not necessarily always deriving from the gut so that we're we have a willingness to learn and understand what's actually going on here and uh, focusing on the community. Um, and increasing community engagement um, so that we are getting at the heart of what the people in this community want for this community. Um, and that's pretty much it. And fortunately, I have the opportunity to have eight other people who ideally want to work with me and support me and back me up so that for the first time, I'm, I'm not going at it alone. So I'm really looking forward to working with those people to, to, to make Bellevue a, a better place. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for representing Bellevue, Pennsylvania. Uh, Councilwoman Tasha Green, can you just give us a little closing and what you're what you're looking forward to doing uh, and, and what type of support you need? Well, I'm looking forward to uh, leading the city and being inclusive of residents on every side of our city. There is a narrative, regardless of race, that a lot of people feel left out of the promise um, of what uh, Westland is known for, which is being a compassionate city. Um, and I personally have seen a lack of uh, development and financial investment on multiple in multiple areas of the city and just um, you know bringing the needs of the people to the table and managing effectively uh, creating more jobs in the city um, and and building creating policy that uh, benefits not only the people who are um, here now but also those who are coming after me um, and uh, in terms of what I need in terms of assistance um, they can find me on Facebook at Tasha Green for Mayor. I'm always looking for volunteers and also financial donations. Uh, if, if anyone would be inclined, I have a website, votetashagreen.com. Um, and uh, just uh, be, be determined to win. If you decide to run, don't um, count on uh, anyone else to do it for you. You have to do the work. Uh, but if you're genuine and, and your heart is in the right place and, and people believe that you will serve them well, they will support you. And that's how I made it. Okay, thank you so much. Now we've got uh, two guests in the room. Um, we've got uh, Collins Windless and Nancy Nahami um, and wanted to see if you had any questions for uh, the mayor of East Point, uh, Mayor Owens, uh, Sabrina Miller, who's on the council at Belleville, Bellevue, Pennsylvania, 
and Councilwoman uh, Tasha Green from Westland, Michigan. Do you have any questions? If you'd like to come off mute. And while, while we're waiting for any questions, if you would leave your information in the chat, all of you, so that we can make sure that we stay in touch. Okay, seeing no questions, I'd like to turn it back over to, I'm not sure if Tylene Henry is still on the line, but I wanna thank you all so much. I, I, this is just part one of this dialogue because we wanna provide, um, I personally wanna provide support to any of what you all are doing, but definitely NABWIC is here in that role. And we have a, a number of, um, of members and representation that can provide resources and, and really, when you have issues that are challenging, particularly physical issues or development issues, we're here for you and uh, like to be there for you as a resource. And uh, I, we are hitting upon our closing time, 1047. So I'd once again, like to thank you all. Does anyone have any final uh, words of wisdom or they want to add anything, sister? Yeah, I can. Um, and I think this is for everybody because everybody is successful here and made it. When people say you can't do it, do it anyway. So Amen. that's just what I have to say about that. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, thank you all. And um, we will keep you all in prayer and uh, definitely um, look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much. Y'all have a wonderful day. You thank too. you. Thank happy you. Juneteenth, everybody. Happy Juneteenth. <laughs> yes, happy Juneteenth. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.